Good morning, family. Welcome to worship at Grace Lutheran Church and School. It's great to see all of you here today. It is the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany, celebrating also the purification of Mary and the presentation of our Lord. And in that context, we're talking about things that we do not because they make us happy, but because other priorities are just as or sometimes even more important. We're going to talk about the struggle and the trials which we engage in, even in average everyday life, for other goals and other reasons that produce joy, but... ...in your bulletin. Uh, by the way, inside front cover, this green box, uh, we've been doing this. Uh, the information box here tells you about the purification of our Lord, gives you some great background on that. The opening hymn is, Hail to the Lord's anointed, please stand and turn toward the back for the procession of the crucifix. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Please kneel as we examine our hearts and confess our sins to Almighty God. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The intro at this morning from Psalm 13 contains the line, My heart shall rejoice in your salvation, which is our focus today. I will sing to the Lord. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed over him. Because I have trusted in your steadfast love. I will sing to the Lord. be to God on high.
the Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may be ever defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated as we hear the word of the Lord. Our Old Testament reading for this morning is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing." Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the heavens, of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, all nations. For great is his steadfast love toward us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and commit to his courts. Our epistle reading for this morning is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the ninth chapter. If I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but not of my own will. I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run, that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you're able for the gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Immediately, Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. The hymn of the day is Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness.
Amen. Beautiful hymn. Love that hymn. 1844, Philadelphia. If that doesn't sound like America in the 1800s, I don't know who what does. I almost can imagine myself on a horse humming that going across the way. Okay, sorry. Uh, please turn with me uh, to the, um, the collect of the day. Uh, page 7. And let's pray that together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that, relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The text for the sermon today is 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Paul, in this lesson, writes something that has confused a lot of people. He didn't write it to confuse them. He wrote it under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but it nonetheless uh, is confusing for some people um, where he says, uh, I've become, you know, all things uh, to all people. And that's the part that really kinds of tang- you know, kind of tangles them up. So we're going to talk about that today. And I'm going to use an example uh, from my own life in ministry to help illustrate this because- for two reasons. First, it's totally appropriate to the text. Second, I very, very, very much want you, my family, to know that pastors are not people, I've I've never given the impression that they're perfect, believe me, but they're not people that somehow, when they put on the holy flea collar, become morally great, you know, uh, or, or somehow they have a life that you can't live because you can They're normal people. They're broken. They need Jesus. They botch things and regret it terribly and and, and really constantly want to do better by God's grace. And I think we're all in that same boat. Uh, So this illustration of exactly this text comes to you from greater Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and uh, years past Hopefully now I'm older and wiser, not just older. I'm definitely older. Um, But here's what happened. As a a new-to-them pastor accepting the call, all I kind of knew about the place was that the the call committee said, we want a Lutheran pastor. We want somebody to come in and tell us what Lutheran is. Places say that a lot. And then you get there. And then you're that, and then like 80, 90% of the call committee very soon ends up gone somewhere else because you were that. Um, That's actually a normal thing, by the way, Um, just in transitions in general, that most of the call committee within a year or two will end up somewhere else. Uh, It's more rare for somebody to stick it out, Uh, and it's mainly because they have struggled so hard in the vacancy to keep the place open and to keep things going that now when the new guy comes and the new guy is him and he does things his way, all of a sudden the call committee sort of goes, I don't feel like I have a purpose anymore. And sometimes they just kind of have to emotionally go to a different place where, well, there it makes sense that they don't do everything, lead everything and make all the decisions because they're new there. But at their old place, they kind of just can't get past what they've been through. And kind of no matter what you do to work with that, it, it, it often doesn't work. And it's nobody's fault. It's just a human behavior thing. But anyway, I went to this place that wanted to know what Lutheran was and quickly discovered the only thing Lutheran was the name on the sign. And so, wow, okay, right, okay, let's uh, work with this. Um, The Florida Georgia District is the house that Seminex built. Uh, and they actively protect that. And my predecessor had been a Seminex grad, and his Seminex diploma was literally on the wall still, and he had to come back to pick that up, was very proud of it, and wanted me to see it and point to it and be excited for him, and I just kind of wanted him to go. And um, 
I got started on actually bringing Lutheranism to a Lutheran church. Now, I meant well, um, but I can be a little zealous uh, for Lutheranism and Lutheran things, a little conservative at times, and kind of strong, and as an introvert, I'm unfortunately limited in my peopley abilities, uh, and so I have to work on that, and I still do this very day, and I will be working on it for a long, long time, trying to get better at it, and so I kind of look around, and I find people that are more peopley, and I try to emulate them. You know, like say they have more of a Labrador puppy personality, and it's awesome, and I don't have that. I'm more of a grumpy old man. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm working on things. So I went to this new parish, and one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, is uh, the difference between confessional Lutheranism and Pentecostalism, because in South Florida, that's a pretty big thing. There's a lot of Pentecostalism. In fact, we had a couple of huge, I mean huge megachurches near us. You could almost throw a softball and hit them. Uh, both of them in excess of 30,000 members, although they didn't have actual membership. But, you know, they, this one, for example, bought a former Kmart and uh, painted it pink. I'm not kidding. And uh, had services in there and rocked out and had bajillions of people and were being taught that they were getting messages from the great beyond. Now, one of my favorite television shows for a time was Third Rock from the Sun, where they would get transmissions from the big head. And that was one of my favorite sayings around Lutherans. And so I took it to this Lutheran church, that, that saying, to, to, a, to a Lutheran church. And I just mentioned that one of the differences uh, is that we believe as Lutherans and are taught by Scripture that, that the Holy Spirit has not promised to give us transmissions directly like from the big head out there, but the Holy Spirit has promised to speak to us through the Word of God. So what God means for us and where God is present for us is in word and sacraments and not in the external direct transmission kind of a thing that some people believe in. I thought that was pretty innocuous, but apparently it wasn't. Because very soon there was a clump of ladies in their 40s and 50s on, in one section of the church that disappeared next Sunday. Now, I didn't think they were raptured, but I did wonder where they went. And so I kind of ask around in a little bit, and it turns out that they were massively offended by the big head reference from my favorite television show. It's a great line. But the problem is, is that sarcasm is my love language, and I think human beings are comical, especially me. And so I say things that are kind of sarcastic to point out how funny we are, hoping that everyone has a sense of humor. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. It seems that, and I, didn't, I had no idea about any of this, one of the ladies there ran a group of other ladies. They met on Friday evening. They were professionals and had money, and they would meet on Friday evenings, and they would rent a, 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 a conference room in a travel lodge, and they would have Pentecostal prayer services self-led. Actually, the one lady was sort of the, the high priestess of this thing. That's my love language again. And um, she would lead this, and they would hear from the Holy Spirit. They said they would speak in tongues. They would shake, rattle, and roll, that's my love language again, and um, do whatever they do, but they would also get out their emotions. Some of them had stressful careers and stressful lives and had been through personal trauma, and one of the ways they were sort of exercising the trauma and the emotion was in these Friday night Pentecostal services that were very, very, very not Lutheran, not what we believe, and I didn't know any of that was going on, and not that I would necessarily approve, if you will, of that kind of thing. I probably would have taken a different approach if I had known about it and tried to get a softer landing for the theology I was trying to communicate, uh, but they left, and I always wished 
for a second chance at that and sort of got it, but it went just as poorly when I came here and found out there was a Bible study led by uh, a lady that was a Beth Moore Bible study. And Beth Moore is a Pentecostal prophetess or was and has written some books and stuff. She's toned it down quite a bit. She's also removed some of her videos. But at the time, this group in Florida was super into Beth Moore. And one of the videos at that time that was super popular by Beth Moore was one on YouTube where she talked about uh, how the Holy Spirit, she was standing, I don't know, somewhere near a bench, and the Holy Spirit told her to go start brushing the hair of a homeless person. So she took her brush out of her purse and started brushing the person's hair, and then this whole story kind of unfolds. And um, if you're a guy and filled with guyness, and you're not super people or touchy-feely, the whole thing kind of makes your skin crawl. That's my love language again, but it's also true. And so when I found out that was going on here, I simply asked the leader of the group, would you mind, could you meet with me about this? I, I have some theological concerns. What I'd like to do is find out what's being taught, what's being done. Um, would love to, to help because I have, I'm... I'm certified by our synod, you know, as a theologian and a pastor, I have a master's degree in theology, I would love to help kind of point to some things that are trouble spots. And all of a sudden, that group was gone. I never heard back. I never heard why. Just gone. I did hear later through the rumor mill, which is always wrong. By the way, if you get your information from the rumor mill, you're getting exactly what you pay for. You're paying nothing, and it's worth zero. So um, that's my love language again. Heard through the rumor mill that I had shut that group down, which, of course, wasn't true. That's not even close to true. I just simply asked, could we meet and talk about this, and it never happened. My point, though, is the reading today from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. By the way, both of these episodes are incredibly painful. It still hurts today, and there's probably literally nothing I can do about it. Uh, but maybe you can with your situations in your life based on 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And this is a really big deal, so we want to kind of talk about this. Paul, let's drop down to verse, um, is it 19? For though I am free from all, I've made myself a servant to all that I might win more of them. Now, that language is a little unusual to us, okay? I will talk about that more in a second. To the Jews, I became a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. So at the front end of that section in verse 19, we have that I might win more of them. And uh, then in the next to last verse in that section, that I might win uh, the weak. And this win language or that I might save some sounds weird to a Lutheran because we know that the gospel saves. I don't save. The gospel saves. So what's going on there and what's this business about becoming as a something else that I'm not? What do you do with that? Do I become a Pentecostal to reach out to Pentecostals? Do I become LDS to reach out to our brothers and sisters around us? Well, no, but we got to do something. What is the something? Paul says to the Jews, I became as a Jew. That terminology in the New Testament typically refers to the Jewish leadership. Paul was a Pharisee. He knows what they're about. He understands what that's about. He became as them in order to win them. He didn't change his theology. He didn't deny Christ. He didn't become something he is not. He became aware of their sensibilities. Aha! Now we've got something. Let's keep going and see if this plays out. To those under the law, that's all Jewish people, I became, and all Gentile converts to Judaism, 
I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law. Why? Because Christ is the fulfillment of the law. But he, he tuned into their sensibilities that he might win those under the law. We're going to talk about the winning thing in a minute. To those outside the law, Gentiles, non-converts, I became as one outside the law, though not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, the law of love. Love is the fulfillment of the law, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak. It's important to understand that the language here, uh, we, we would think more in terms of sensitive than literally weak, you know. Uh, to those who couldn't deadlift 500 pounds, I became like, no, you know, it, it's sensitive, right? To the sensitive, I became sensitive. That's really hard, right, guys? Do we not get in trouble for this all the time? Sorry, but it's a limitation, okay? Got to deal with it. But to the sensitive, I became sensitive that I might win the sensitive. I become all things to all people, not taking on their theology, not doing their sins, but being sensitive to who they are, that by all means I might save some. Now, I'm preaching to me, but then to you, because I'm still working on this really hard with some success occasionally, okay? So I get, in other words, I get where you're at, I get how hard this is. It's really, really hard. If you've ever dealt with a family member who went, you know, kind of from a Lutheran perspective, went off some other deep end into a something, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You can get to a point like, what language is this? What are you talking about? You know, we can't even, uh, you know, two ships passing in the night, right? Yeah. No, I get that. I've had that same thing happen to me. But here's what's important. When we tune into people's sensitivities, we don't have to become them. We don't have to believe what they believe. We don't have to do what they do, but we can couch our language in a way that reflects respect for their humanness, okay? while we gospel them, all right? And this is something I've been thinking about a lot lately because we've talked about we're going to do the Hello Saints Bible study. Uh, it's aimed more toward Lent, but we're going to blink and be there, so i got to get on this, kind of figuring out which videos do we watch and what are we going to do. And I'm, I've got a worry about this, and I decided I'm just going to talk about that worry and share it and, you know, and, and be open and real uh, which is really, really super difficult for an introverted person that creeps you out, you know. It's kind of not what you do. But I'm worried about the Hello Saints thing because I have racquetball buddies who are LDS and who've said, you know, I might like to come to that. And it froze me with terror in my tracks. Not because they want to come, but because I don't know what's going to happen if they come. You see what I mean? As Lutherans, we kind of, generally speaking, aren't super good at this 1 Corinthians 9 part. We are very good at being nerdy McNerdmeisters. And we can speak the Lutheran lingo, and we love medieval art, and we super geek out over medieval art, and medieval music, and medieval torture, no, medieval things and we can be, as Lutherans, we can be a bit stiff. Sorry. There, I said it. Hi, my name is Tony, and I'm Lutheran. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? So, without meaning to do this, we can be a little rough on other people. Speaking from personal, repentant experience, we can be a little rough right? And so I'm thinking about this now days and days. What do we do if we have Hello Saints and some racquetball buddies come who are very, very, very super LDS? Like I have racquetball buddies who are in the bishopric. I have racquetball buddies who make big decisions for the church and, and do very important. I have racquetball buddies that shine 
on, on Monday morning because over the weekend they volunteered at a temple. And, they're, and they want me to know how happy they are. And I need to be a little happy for them because if I'm like, that's great, pagan. That's probably not a good response. I'm thinking. I don't know. Again, I'm introverted. I'm a little limited here. But I'm thinking that probably doesn't play well. You know, and in a church body that tends to be nerdy McNerdmeister on medieval everything, you know, it's 2023, and we may have a little catching up to do to reach people. You know, and I, I'm thinking about this more and more and more, mainly because I play racquetball with LDS people, and it's completely fish out of water. They have their conversations, and they're at the ward together, and they have their inside everything, and I'm like, oh, hello, remember me? I, yeah breathing over here, and then it hit me, oh, we do that, oh, and ouch, what would it look like in your life if you ramped up sensitivity to what's key and important to other people, and I'm asking myself this question a lot lately, I don't have this down. I'm trying real hard by God's grace. And in this area, I'm an extra grace required. Okay? I'm an EGR in the people business. Okay? So I know it's not easy. And Paul's not saying it's easy. He's literally saying this because most people don't do this. Right? It's a shortcoming everybody has universally. And you can go over the deep end the other way too. And you've got to watch out for that. You know, we don't want to be uh, justifying sinful or blasphemous behavior and theology in order to win some. That's not how you do that, right? You don't violate Scripture. You don't violate who you say you are to fit in. That's the other extreme, and we want to watch out for that um, as well. German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche lived from 1844 to 1900, wrote a book called Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Um, he is infamous for the line, God is dead. He didn't mean that God is actually dead. He meant that modern European society was trying to kill him, was trying to ignore him, trying to make him gone, trying to do everything by force of reason. Nietzsche wrote about a character called Last Man, capital L, Last, capital M, Man, Last Man, who seeks only happiness apart from struggle and questioning. And he asks the question himself, Nietzsche does, will we have enough chaos left within us to give birth to a dancing star? It's a very un-Lutheran question. Dancing stars? What? Yeah. Or maybe it sounds like a TV show. It's kind of eh. Right. But here's the point. Happiness isn't the only reason to do things. Happiness certainly isn't the only reason that things are worth doing. For example, parenting is tough. You know, who says, hey, I would like to spend six or eight hours passing a bowling ball? Who says, you know, I think several months of sleep deprivation would be awesome. But, but parenting is awesome. It will stretch you beyond your limits. It will challenge you way past what you ever thought you could do. You will bawl. You will sob. You will rejoice. You will triumph. And you'll sob and you'll triumph beyond any sobbing or triumphing you've ever done before. <laughs> but happy? Pfft. That's dime store stuff. Parenting is joy. So I want to ask you. Oh, I was looking for the notes place on the back. Oh, there is. There's a little one. All right, we're going to work with it. We're going to have joy. Four questions. You won't have room to write the answers, and that's fine, because I want you to think about it anyway. This is homework. First, 
What are some things that you, you might have to abbreviate this question. What are some things you've done that have increased your struggle, suffering, and trials? And we're not talking about I stubbed my toe, okay? We're talking about big honking things, sacrificial things. What are some things you've done that increased your struggle, your suffering, and trials? Maybe you've done SMP. That's some suffering, struggle, and trials right there. Yeah. Colloquy, right? Yeah. Okay. Number two. Why did you do those things? What moved you? Why did you do that, those things? Number three, what would you do differently this time? Ooh, that's a thinker. What would you do differently this time? In other words, about those things. How would you conduct yourself differently now that you have the benefit of experience and wisdom and you can look back and you know hindsight's twenty twenty mostly. And then four, what biases do you have toward different kinds of people? Be honest. This is just for you anyway. What biases do you have toward different kinds of people? What biases do you have toward unbelievers? What biases do you have toward other believers? Whether they're Baptist or Pentecostal, whether they're Jehovah's Witness and LDS, whether they're Buddhist, Zoroastrian, what biases do you have? And finally, what will you change for the sake of the gospel? What will be different about your interactions with people for the sake of the gospel? Paul says, I've become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. It's weird language, this win some, save some language. It almost sounds like he's gone big box evangelical on us. Paul, what are you doing? Always being all things to all people. No, he's, he's talking in a really neat way. Dr. James Vells says uh, there's a difference between Newtonian and Einsteinian um, physics. And you talk to James Corney more about this. He knows this stuff. But I just want to do the basic. Newtonian physics tends to deal with the world we can see. People, bridges, even apple trees. Einsteinian physics tends to deal with the world we can't easily see with quarks and string theory and wild stuff like how can light be a particle and a wave at the same time? And the Bible does this, okay? So kind of on a Newtonian level, Paul says, I have become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. But on an Einsteinian level, he knows that the gospel saves. He's the one who wrote Romans 1.16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. In other words, both are true at the same time. It's a different way of speaking about the same activity. We gospel others that we might save them. How? By God saving them through the gospel we're saying. And we do this all under grace because the fact of the matter is, is that we're all broken, we're all sinful, we're all selfish. We choose convenience over meaning all too often. Convenience over meaning. Yeah. And we need Jesus. And thank God literally that Jesus did 1 Corinthians 9. Right? He got Newtonian. He took on human flesh. He suffered and died and paid for the sins of the world, even the sin of being too Lutheran. So that by faith in him, you're forgiven, you're saved, and you have eternal life. So rejoice and be glad, nerdy McNerdmeister. Yeah. Yeah. And while we rejoice, and while we are glad, please consider again that last question. 
What biases do you have against people who are different? And what will you change for the sake of the gospel, remembering what Jesus has done first for us? In his holy name, amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, amen. Please stand. seated as we receive the offering. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people everywhere according to their need. Almighty God, we thank and praise you for your word today where Paul writes under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that he's become all things to all people, that he might win some. Grant that we, your people, who honestly endeavor to be Christ-like and to follow you, uh, grant that we, by your grace, would become ourselves more gracious. Grant that we uh, would be firm in theology, but not unmoving with people. Grant us a sensitivity to their sensitivity. Respect them as fellow human beings and treat them with love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant that we would not be so stuck in our ways that we insist on externals and things that are adiaphora uh, as though they are commanded. Grant that we would not confuse our personal favorites with what is objective truth. Grant that we would be kind and loving and welcoming, not yielding uh, on theology, but rather uh, being sensitive to other people's place in life and finding ways that help them lower their barriers to hearing the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for the executive, legislative, and judicial branches of federal, state, and local governments that they would rule justly so that we may lead a peaceable and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Lutheran Church in Missouri Synod and leaders at every level that those leaders would have a discerning heart to resolve matters among God's people and distinguish between right and wrong. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our partners in mission 
around the world for our district president, board of directors, vice presidents, circuit visitors, and district pastors, teachers, church workers, parishes, schools, and ministries that they would make known among all people what the Lord has done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish and school, Grace Lutheran Church and School, and our Spanish Fork Mission, that we would go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray on behalf of brothers and sisters who need our prayers for Mark Holt, who had foot surgery and is recovering at home, that he would recover well, that he would be free of infection, that he would know your mercy by your holy word, and that he would uh, truly uh, believe and understand that you are present with him, that you're working in his life, and that you're, you're taking care of him just like the rest of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for Kathy's sister, Kim, uh, who is now home on hospice. Uh, we pray, Lord God, comfort for her, peace for her, and for the whole family, strength, strength to face uh, the days ahead, a focus on the relationships and, and the love that is there uh, and on living a life of no regret. Uh, we pray uh, that you would watch over Kim, uh, that you would uh, cover her with your tender loving kindness and your mercy and your grace, and uh, that you would shelter her as she goes through uh, cancer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for Ben and Sarah Greenman, uh, who had a child on early Wednesday morning. The baby would be healthy, wonderful, and strong, and brought to the waters of holy baptism. We pray strength for the family in the midst of their uh, months ahead of sleep deprivation and other things that go on. We pray uh, for the rich experience and beautiful joy uh, that parenting in the midst of struggle brings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for Juanita Davis. Uh, who, after moving right before Christmas, moving to Iowa, suffered a mini-stroke requiring long-term hospitalization. We pray that she would recover soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, for a difficult situation, actually several in one of our parishes, uh, that you would resolve everything according to your will, that peace would reign and that reconciliation would take place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our military personnel. Uh, especially with everything that's going on right now in time of war. Bryant Seeley, Nicole Wedge, Rachel Wedge, Gage and Amnesty Carney, keep them safe and under your care. Grant them opportunities to share Jesus with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks for the many opportunities you give us to share our abundance with others. We give you thanks for opportunities to share the gospel of salvation in Jesus Christ with other people. We give you thanks for the support of Grace Lutheran Church, School, and Mission. We give you thanks most of all for our adoption through the waters of holy baptism into your family, O oh Lord, and for the love we share as a congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in our private lives, we all know people who desperately need your hand of grace upon them. We pause now for a few moments in silence that we may name them before you privately in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, for our brother George, who has begun chemotherapy and has a long way to go. And unfortunately, uh, the first couple, two, three early treatments already are giving him nausea uh, and distress. We pray for strength for our brother to go through this. We pray that the chemotherapy would shrink the tumor uh, to the point where not even surgery uh, is needed. Or if surgery is needed, we pray that it would be an easy, a, a, a small thing to go get, and that he would uh, power through it. Uh, give him strength by your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, the liturgy continues now uh, with the service of the sacrament, beginning on page 13, where it says, God gives us a foretaste of the feast to come. The Lord be with you. 
with you. And with thy spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, out of love for his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord God, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We continue with the post-communion canticle, the Nunc Dimittis, at the bottom of page 17 in your bulletin. Thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, receive the Lord's blessing from the book of Numbers in the Old Testament. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This service is ended. The closing hymn is... When to our world the Savior came, please remain standing.
gentlemen, please be seated for announcements. I know I have that effect on people. I tell you. He's entitled. There's been big changes in his world. Have there been big changes in his world? Yeah. Sorry, he's crying. I'll let you. Yeah. Um, you guys, uh, could you, do you have any, anything you want to share about Wednesday morning? Baby sister. Oh. 7 a.m., 7 pounds. And everybody's back home now. What's her name? Mary. Marion or Mary? Marion. Uh, Marion Lee. Okay, very good. Beautiful name. Beautiful baby. I got a picture. Wow. Super cute. Gives you all the squishies, you know. Yeah. Very, very cool. Congratulations. God bless. Yeah, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you for bringing visitors and guests today. Uh, you're very brave. I mean, thanks for bringing them. Uh, we love to see them. Very good. And uh, we won't put you on the spot too much, but we want to welcome you back and uh, let you know that uh, we love having you here. Come hang out with us uh, anytime. This is a great place, and it's a great family, and it's a great place to be. Absolutely. All right, taking a quick look uh, at the uh, events schedule coming forward. Um, Tuesday night, LWML night, first Tuesday of the month. Ladies, come and have an awesome, awesome time at 6.30. Wednesday is Lifeline screening beginning at 8 a.m. That's a big deal. Um, you might want to come and do that, especially if you're over 45. Uh, 2.30 p.m. is Grace Lutheran Chapel, and you're always invited to chapel as a member of Grace to come and support the school and to worship with the community uh, in a chapel. The book fair begins on Thursday, February 8th. The Grace Lutheran School Book Fair Thursday, Friday. Friday also is Grandparents' Day. That begins at 8.30 a.m. here at the ranch. By the way, you can be a grand friend. Because remember, some of the kids have grandparents out of state, can't come. Uh, so you can be a grand friend to somebody who might, you know, otherwise not have somebody able to come visit because, you know, grandma and grandpa is out of state. Uh, so uh, think about that, please. Um, Thursday, February 8th also is nine years of service for me here at Grace Lutheran Church and School, so that's a big deal, nine years of service. Thank you. I, and th thank, thank you for putting up with me for nine years. That, I know that is a lot. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, around the corner is Lent. So February 14 is Ash Wednesday when we have the scripture reading. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. It's a remembrance of the beginning of a season of repentance leading up to Easter. That is Wednesday evening. Uh, Parent-teacher conferences uh, start that week. Uh, but there's no school on Thursday, and that's as a result of all the extra that the parent, uh, that the teachers need to do. February 18th, Sunday, three, oh, it's on the flyer on the inside. Three o'clock is the ordination of Vicar Lamont, who will be Pastor Lamont from then on. Um, we had to wait. It's a requirement of the seminary. You must wait four weeks from the time of certification. That landed on February 12th, so it missed Sunday the 11th by a day. So it's going to be the 18th, and uh, we're going to throw him to the wolves. I mean, we're going to get him busy right away, and uh, it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful thing. There will be a reception uh, following that ordination. Inside your fold-out, your insert, if you just fold out where the staples are, this whole thing right here, uh, gives you all kinds of info. We want to especially invite you, your relatives, your friends who've maybe never seen an ordination. Bring them. School children, and we're talking about the whole circuit. So we'll get the word out also to the other churches. And uh, actually, I think we already did that, but we'll, we'll remind them and we'll get this rolling. Yes, they already have the info, but we'll get this rolling. The 18th, big, big stuff, ordination right here at the ranch. Uh, the spring mission trip uh, to the Bahamas is still on. 
April 1 to April 6, there is a, a State Department travel to, a, a level 2 travel warning, but it's related to local gang activity in Nassau. Uh, doesn't bother what we're doing. Uh, so the plan still is to go and to do that. We'll be doing general maintenance uh, at the church and at the parsonage, organizing yard work, and we're going to spend time, as we always do, uh, with the AIDS uh, patients in All Saints Camp, and we'll be visiting uh, the Haitian refugees uh, out in the, in the jungle. So uh, we'll be doing all of that again. If you would like to go, remember, the only real cost is your flight. Uh, we have a place to stay. Uh, well, and you bring snacks, whatever snacks that you want to bring for you. We usually recommend granola bars or stuff like that. In case we're out in the field during lunchtime, you've got something to hold you over until we get back. Otherwise, we cook meals and stuff at the house. For more information, let me know. Talk to Ken, uh, Ken Carey. Uh, talk to Cheryl. And uh, we'll get you all lined up uh, for Bahamas. And again, we want to thank you guys for bringing our attention to the Bahamas and to the need there. We have fallen in love with the place, uh, and we appreciate you for opening our eyes to what's going on there and including us in what is a very important part of your life, and that's a big deal. Thank you. Uh, this is a great thing. Cheryl? Uh, the book there, though, didn't actually have a lot of information. Thank you. I, I forgot. Yep, the book fair will be here after church as well. A great opportunity to help support the school and buy early birthday presents and Christmas presents uh, from uh, the book fair. The summer trip also to the Bahamas is June 29 to July 6. That's also right here on page 6 in your insert. Is it 6? 4. Page 4 in your insert. Um, that is the trip where we go and we do va vacation Bible school with the kids at the church. And we also go to All Saints AIDS camp and we do work there. Uh, we bring them pizza, and we visit them and read them the Bible, and it's just absolutely amazing. Um, and we work with the Haitian refugees. So let us know, uh, and let us know if there is any financial burden, because people often give gifts to help other people go on these trips. Um, because it's the Bahamas, it's not quite as restrictive as Haiti. If, you're, if your parents or parents come with you, you can be younger, and it'll be just fine. So talk to us if you'd like to go as a family, or maybe you and one of your children want to go. But let us know, and uh, we'll, we'll get you all squared away on that. It's a really awesome thing. Life screening is on page 6 in your insert, all about that. Take a look at page 7, and a week of grace from National Lutheran Schools Week, Pajama and Crazy Hair Day. That sounds fun. Uh, classic fun day, best dress day, dynamic duo, favorite sports day, and ski day. Uh, that's all in living color right here. Um, Liz Hamilton does a great job of keeping up with Facebook still and uh, does tons of very selfless service uh, in helping out with this. I don't know if you know that Liz used to work in the office, and uh, she, as she says, I'm just a parent now. Um, Liz, I, I just want you guys to know, and she didn't put me up to this, and she probably would get me in trouble for telling you. Liz is so devoted to Grace, uh, she often pays for Facebook advertising of the school out of her own pocket. And uh, she's that devoted to Grace, so that's kind of cool. And a lot of these pictures come from that. Uh, check out our Facebook page where uh, she made a reel, a Facebook reel of the ski day, and uh, that's pretty cool as well. I think that covers the bases. Yes. Yes. Very cool, thank you. That's February 16 for our 20s and 30s group. There's about 17 to 20 of them. And uh, they're getting together from all the churches, but mainly that's Josh and Addie are leading the charge on that. Good job, guys. Uh, February 16, what time? Seven? Seven? February 16, 
is two days after Ash Wednesday, so it's a Friday. So it's Friday, February 16, over at Christ Lutheran. Uh, that's a great opportunity to hang out 20s and 30s. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Bell choir starting back up Tuesdays at 7 uh, for practice, February 13. Here's your contact, your point of contact. Right here, you do not need to know how to read music. I think you do need a functioning wrist. Is that there? Yeah, you need a functioning wrist. Uh, and, and, oh, and you have to be able to make steam on a mirror if you breathe on it. Yeah, and then you can play bells. That means you're alive. Chris has been trying to train me for years, and it's just not possible. She gave up. Yeah. All right, very good. Hey, you guys, um, uh, oh, oh, don't forget, there's Bible study after this large catechism at 1120. Uh, we're just, we're kind of carrying this through until Lent. And then the Sunday morning 1120 Bible study will be Finding God in the Lord of the Rings. So that's coming up right around the corner. Um, I believe the launch date is the week uh, after, sorry, is the Sunday after Ash Wednesday. Um, I'm pretty sure. I don't know what the date of that is. Yeah, we're going to start at the Sunday after Ash Wednesday, Finding God in the Lord of the Rings, Sunday mornings at 1120. The Wednesday night study, Hello Saints, that's going to be the week after Wednesday nights, the week after Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday's regular liturgy and the imposition of ashes. But on the Wednesday nights in Lent, we're doing Vespers. So we did Matins for Advent. We're doing Vespers. Uh, during Lent, and then Bible study. All right, good stuff. Stay tuned for more announcements. Lots of exciting things happening. You guys are my family, and I love you to pieces. I'll see you in the back. Mm -hmm.